Yeah, quite the disaster. I'm in here this morning putting together a GoPro fan. It's going out to New Zealand. We're printing and ran out of covers here. So that's not what the video is really about. So recently I was in New Hampshire working on somebody's printer while I was there. And I was putting in you know, the heat break that I recommend. Now I've heard a few people have a few comments about these where they hang up on the inside. And I never ran across that. I've used them often and they work really good. So, however, when I got to New Hampshire, instead of ordering the two pack, I ordered a single pack, which usually they're sold in two packs, which was kind of weird. Um, I got up there and I was trying to, I was feeding the filament through and there was obviously a burr inside there catching, um, catching on the filament. So instead of buying another heat break, I was there for a limited time. I didn't want to just order another one and have that be the same thing and then I wouldn't be able to finish up. So I went to Amazon and I ordered this pack of two millimeter files and just stuck it down in the top, twisted it. I did it for a few minutes, um, just cleaning up that edge in there. They don't go all the way through, they just go in a little bit. Um, but I just did it on the top. Seems like maybe I did a little bit on the bottom too. Um, and that solved the problem. So the files were like 10 bucks. So I left one there and brought the rest home with me. Um, but, all right, so back to this heat break. If it's such a pain in the ass, you know, why bother? So you can buy the expensive one from some of the more high-end printer supply companies, or you can get this one from Amazon. A two pack is like 10 or 11 bucks. The files, if you need them, were less than 10 bucks. They were like probably about 10 bucks. So 20 bucks if you have to get the files too. But this thing right here, um, this is awesome. So everybody knows the, or most people know, the original heat break brings the Bowden tube all the way down to the bottom where it meets up into the nozzle. And that's where the headaches begin. You get a little bit of slop in your connector, your Bowden tube's bouncing up and down, and uh, you get a little bit of creep when you get separation there. And if you go from like PLA to PETG, you can really have problems where the PETG pushes the PLA, um, which is now uh, softer because it's hotter. It pushes it through that crack. So I um, highly recommend these because the Bowden tube only. Now I say Bowden or Bowden. It's because we got a road here. It's Bowden. So yeah, bear with me. Um, so yeah, it goes into there. To install this is really easy. If anybody remembers this printer, this is the Ultimate uh, Ender 5. Looks, probably looks familiar. So for a while it was dual extrusion. Um, I have plans. I have plans of either taking this or another Ender 5 Plus I have IDEX because I really didn't like to build um, the purge tower and all that. Just a pain in the ass. Anyway, we replaced it originally with a Micro Swiss, and then that Micro Swiss was acting stupid. So we put a, and at the same time, we got one of those bimetal heat ends that weren't tapered on the end. We installed it in here. Um, I like wrapping mine because it actually will run less power in here. It just makes it uh, more effective. There's less heat loss, less heat coming onto your print. Um, so how to put this in? <clears throat> you want to eat... <clears throat> So take your old one apart, you need to do it while it's hot. So first thing to do is uh, heat it up, get your filament tube out of here, unscrew it. You're gonna wanna hold it front to back. I recommend channel locks so you don't slip. You do not wanna touch anything here. You don't wanna touch the metal. You don't wanna touch it to this metal case. The wires going into the element can be bare. If you touch them, you can get a spark and blow the MOSFET on your board. So be very careful, hold it front to back, unscrew your nozzle and then unscrew your original heat break. Put your new heat break in 
and screw it so it's flush. The top of the threads are flush with the heap rock block or a little lower. Then put your nozzle in. Very important that your nozzle does not bottom out on the heat block before it hits the heat break inside the heat block. There's a lot of things with the name heat. Um, so yeah, from there, uh, of course, put it all back together. If you got screws in the bottom, put your screws in. Uh, don't go crazy on your nut here. If <clears throat> now these Allen wrenches are really cheap. Sometimes you can't get that out if you have the Allen wrench. Check the end of your Allen wrench and grind a little off if that helps, or find some small torque spits, torque spits, or a bit set. The bit sets are usually hardened. Not all Allen wrenches are hardened, especially the ones they send us um, with the printers. Okay, so retraction is the only other thing to think about, S depending on whether you're direct extrusion. If you're direct extrusion, you're looking at about two millimeters, 45 millimeters a second. If you're a Bowden tube, if you see any kind of slop here, like any kind of movement here or at your extruder, that space when it moves. Generally with the Bowden tube, you're gonna be looking at um, probably about, believe it or not, even though it's all metal, you should be looking at probably between two and if you've got a really sloppy tube, you could be up around six, but really you should tighten that up. It's very easy to go direct extrusion with these machines. If you have wheels, you can print a bracket and spend 20 bucks, get you a pancake or probably 30 bucks now, get you a pancake and a three to one extruder. I got a couple of different kinds you can use, uh, but they're available. And that really, this tube is just kinda eh. It's not really the tube that's the problem, it's the cheap connectors and the little tin that holds them in. And also they bite into this and they're constantly have in and out force from the extruder. And you got a sharp object into it and it kind of digs a hole. And then over time you can develop a little bit of slop. Really need some kind of compression connector. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. The heat brakes are really, really good. Get your, extra, uh, get your attraction settings right and uh, get it installed right without bricking your machine and yeah it prints really really good i have it on another machine and like i said i actually have micro swiss hot ends sitting around not doing anything it could be in this machine all right that's about it let me finish up on these gopro this gopro fans printing some covers right here this is the uh, mother of all under threes and this is a PETG printing machine right here. It loves this stuff. All right, everybody, get you a bimetal heat break if you don't have one. It's going to save you a lot of aggravation. Good luck.